Now for our final section about the digestive system, we're going to be two more accessory organs, the gallbladder and the pancreas. They have very different functions, but somewhat related. So we're going to talk about them together. So first, the gallbladder. The gallbladder's job is to store and concentrate the bile that is made by the liver. The gallbladder is this little pocket uh, that sits on the uh, bottom and front of the liver. And the uh, bile created by the hepatocytes flows out of the liver, remember, through the um, cannuliculi and the the bile ductules, it flows into the left and right hepatic ducts, which bring the bile to the common hepatic duct, which carries the bile to the cystic duct. And the cystic duct, frankly, weird. Okay, Every other tube in the body carries things in one direction, in its normal function. One direction, except the trachea, like the trachea and the bronchi, right? Air goes both ways. But everything that's carrying fluid carries it in, in one direction, right? But the cystic duct carries bile in both directions. So what happens is that the bile goes in and out of the gallbladder in the same place. There's no in one side and out the other. When you have a, a meal that includes fats, the bile is needed in the duodenum, and so the gallbladder is going to contract and squeeze some of that bile out through the cystic duct. It's going to travel through the common bile duct down to the uh, major duodeno, duodenal papilla here, where it empties into the duodenum. Now, this um, raised area on the outside of the duodenum is called the hepatopancreatic ampulla. Remember ampulla? We had one in the inner ear. Just kind of a raised, um, almost volcano-shaped volcano, volcano -shaped thing. Uh, notice that the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct, that's this, are both going to empty into that same place. Now, the problem with the gallbladder not having an exit at the bottom or at the front uh, is that sometimes the bile sits in the gallbladder and becomes too concentrated and it actually forms stones. So this is an actual gallbladder. Uh, it's magnified. Here we can see uh, centimeters. So these are what, two, twice normal size or so. Um, and these are actual gallstones. This is what they look like. Uh, and this is when the minerals in the bile concentrate and collect into these little shapes. Uh, gallstones are caused by high concentrations of certain materials. Uh, they are more common in women, especially white people. Uh, they're more common in developed countries. They're more common in people with a high fat diet. They're linked to obesity. They're more common as you get older. Uh, obviously, females and females, more female sex hormones means more chance of gallstones. And if you lack physical activity, more chance of gallstones. So, yeah, as a, uh, you know, middle aged white woman in America, I don't worry about these uh, at all. Okay, moving on. The only treatment for gallstones is to remove the gallbladder. That's called a cholecystectomy. Um, and it is going to have an effect on your lifestyle. Uh, you are going to have to limit the amount of fat that you eat at any one time because you don't have a gallbladder to store bile. Uh, the liver continues to make bile. It doesn't know the gallbladder is gone, so it just keeps making bile, sending it out the uh, hepatic ducts to the common bile duct, um, and it just empties into the duodenum. Uh, but since you can't produce a lot of bile all at once if you don't have gall uh, gallbladder, you have to limit the am amount of fat that you eat at any one time. If you don't, then you literally don't have enough bile to break up the fat into smaller particles that can be broken down by enzymes. 
Uh, and if that happens, then the fat tends to flow through your digestive system kind of without slowing down and you can get some really, really unpleasant uh, side effects. You can get very, very sick, nausea, vomiting, cramping, and also diarrhea. So do take care of your gallbladder. Um, you know, eat a balanced diet and uh, lots of water and remember, fiber. Okay, so this is liver, uh, and he says, what is it, gallbladder? Can't you say I have a lot to do? And gallbladder says, I make these. He's got his little stones. You make stones? You're just supposed to hold what I give you. Get out. Go on. I made these. And he says, look at him. He's so sad. Um, if you like sad gallbladder, and honestly, everyone does, you can buy a plush of some sad gallbladder from the awkward store. Adorable. All right, now the pancreas. The pancreas, we already talked about its endocrine function, which is that it produces insulin to help the tissues in the liver and the skeletal muscles and the fat cells take up glucose when there's excess glucose in the bloodstream. Now, today, for the digestive system, we're going to be concerned with the exocrine functions of the pancreas. And that is that it creates pancreatic juices, which is a disgusting name for digestive enzymes and bicarbonate. It then releases those into the duodenum here at the uh, major duodenal papilla and the minor papilla right there. Now the digestive enzymes, there are several. We're not going to uh, worry about uh, what each of them is for now. That is a subject for uh, physiology class. But the bicarbonate is really important because Bicarb is, uh, is very, very strongly basic. And so remember that right here, the stomach has emptied very, very acidic chyme into the duodenum. The rest of the intestines do not operate well in an acidic environment. So we need to neutralize the stomach acid. It's done its job, hopefully, of... Um, neutralizing and killing off any potential pathogens. So now that acid needs to be neutralized. This bicarbonate is gonna do that job of neutralizing the acid. And then the rest of the digestive system, the um, enzymes can operate in a neutral environment or close to neutral where they're much more comfortable. This is what the pancreas uh, looks like on a microscope slide. We've got these big uh, what we call pancreatic islets. They look like you know, little islands of cells. These are the things that make the uh, insulin and they secrete it into the blood vessel right there. Um, sorry, that's, a, that's not a blood vessel, that's a duct. They secrete it into ducts that go to blood vessels. All right, now the acinar cells are in smaller little bundles around the pancreatic islets. These are the ones that are going to make the digestive enzymes. And they secrete those into these ducts. Those pancreatic ducts then fuse into the main pancreatic duct. The cells lining the ducts actually produce the bicarbonate. Okay. The uh, Pancreatic juices flow out the main pancreatic duct, and then as it gets closer to the duodenum, the duct splits into the main duct and an accessory pancreatic duct over here. That's going to secrete a little bit of the pancreatic enzymes at this minor duodenal papilla. Um, and that there's two points of this. One is that... Um, this is going to help to neutralize the acid sooner. The other is that if either one of these is blocked for any reason, the other duct can still get the pancreatic juices into the duodenum. All right, so to sum up, for the gallbladder, we have the left and right hepatic ducts merging to form a common hepatic duct. From there, the bile flows through the cystic duct to the gallbladder when it's needed it flows out of the gallbladder back through the cystic duct into the common bile duct the common bile duct goes behind the accessory pancreatic duct fuses with the main pancreatic duct and uh, 
uh, merges at the hepatopancreatic ampulla and empties through the major duodenal papilla here. Meanwhile, the accessory pancreatic duct here empties at the minor duodenal papilla. Now we have uh, neutralized the stomach acid from uh, the, in the chyme, and now we have bile to break up the fats, plenty of enzymes to break up everything else. Our digestive system is ready to continue. Now, all of that is this on a model, okay? So this is a little section of the liver with the gallbladder on it, okay? And um, here's the pancreas. And what they've done is they've sectioned out this part right here so that we can see this pancreatic duct, okay? Normally that would be inside the pancreas, so we couldn't see it. You can see here, it splits into an accessory pancreatic duct. The main pancreatic duct goes this way. This is the minor papilla, this is the major papilla. The bile duct comes here. This is the common bile duct, empties at the major papilla. These are kidneys. This is the spleen, okay? Remember, kidneys are more medial, and the spleen is at the end of the pancreas, okay? So don't mistake the spleen and the kidneys. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? We have the duodenum here with its circular folds, and then that's gonna continue on and become the jejunum, the ileum, dump through the ileocecal valve into the cecum, off which hangs the uh, appendix, and then all of that now digested food is gonna go through the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sphygmoid colon, now it's feces, it's gonna get stored in the rectum until it's time for the anus to release it. And that's the digestive system.